This is going to be your final program for Chapter 6, Working with Lists. This is your chance to put it all together to kind of review all the different techniques and processes we've used for working with lists. Think about all the functions that you have for lists. Think about the methods that you use for lists. And think about the different techniques using if statements and loops to work with lists and get it all put together with a working program. The object of this program will be to remove duplicates, duplicate numbers, or duplicate entries from a list. Before you get started, you should always make sure that you truly understand what the program is and develop some kind of algorithm. It's really not the best idea to just hop right into Python and do what you need to do, and then you kind of feel lost, like, what do I do now? You may make sure that you really understand the program and have some kind of an idea. Then when you sit down, you can feel more confident. So I'm going to walk you through the first couple parts of programming. Let's talk about a program description and an algorithm. You should watch this thoroughly before you get started in Python. So what is this program all about? You're going to create a program that fills a list with random numbers between 1 and 20. And that's going to be this particular assignment that they do need to be between 1 and 20 inclusive. The number of elements in the list should vary from run to run, so you're going to ask the user how many numbers. Sometimes it might be 10, 20, 30, 40, anything. Once you have the original list, I want you to keep it because you're going to print it at the end, but I also want you to make a copy of the list, and in this copy, you're going to remove any duplicate numbers. Then you're going to print both the original and the copy, so you could do a kind of a comparison. And then some optional things you can add to your program that shouldn't be that difficult, print the average of the original list because it's filled with numbers and the average of the copy of the list. And also a nice added bonus would be to print the number of duplicates removed. There's a couple ways to do both of these things. So here's your algorithm. This is your step-by-step -step list. First you're going to declare an empty list. You're going to ask the user how many numbers to fill the list and then fill the list with random numbers between 1 and 20. These are all things you should be really comfortable doing by now. You're going to make a copy of the list. Now, there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can make the copy first and then remove the duplicates, or you can make the copy as you are removing the duplicates, but that is going to be a requirement. Then you're going to print the original list and print the copy of the list, and then if you get a chance, you're going to print the averages and the number of duplicates removed. To kind of get this algorithm straight in your mind, have a good, clear idea of what you're going to be doing. And this, most of this you already know how to do. The only thing that might be a little bit that's going to require you to think is removing the duplicates. So let's talk about that. Let's go into more detail. I'm going to go over with you two different ways that you can remove the duplicates. So you can pick one of these or you can develop your own way. These certainly aren't the only two ways to do it. Option number one. You're going to use yet a third list. So I've talked to you how two of them are required, but you can use a third list, counters. You did a counters with dice rolls program, and you also did a counters with a mean, median, and mode program. And, and we know that our numbers are going to be from 1 to 20, so we already have an idea of what the size for our counters would be, you know, from 0 to 20. Um, I also would need to make it actually 21 because I'm going to include 0. And then I'm going to count every time I get a random number, I would increment the counter of that index, just like you did for the dice rolls and mean, median, mode program. Then when you're creating a copy of the list, use the counters list and append the index number to the copy if the index is greater than zero. So I'm going to basically just go through my, my counters, and if the counter remains zero, I don't need to add it to my list. And if it's one or above, I don't care how many times it's above, I just add that index once. So that's a pretty slick little way of, um, I'm not actually removing the duplicates, I'm just not including them more than once when I make a copy. So that's certainly one way that will, will, will work. Option number two, you go ahead and create the copy of the original list and sort it. So it's going to be in order from lowest to highest. Then you're going to use a while loop and a variable for the index to compare the elements. This is like what we did just recently in a multiple lists program where we just compared to see if they were the same. 
and then, but this time we're going to go a step further because if it is the same, you would pop that element at the index variable. And if it's not the same, so I have an else, I increment the index variable. So it's a slight modification from what you did in the multiples program. Either of these options would just require a slight change from how you've done it in earlier programs. So option one, using counters list. Option two, using a while loop to go through. Both of them are great ways to do it. And maybe you come up with your own way. If so, then make sure that you keep your way to yourself because if I start seeing third or fourth way, which is great, I love to see creativity, but I want everybody to have their own way of doing it. So I'll only get, give full credit to the first person, person who comes up with an original way of doing it. And then if they choose to share that with other people, they do not get the same full credit. Here's your rubric. This is an assessment grade. It's going to be up, worth up to 15 points. And here's the things I'm going to be looking for. Did you get random numbers that were between 1 and 20 inclusive, not bigger or not smaller? Did you create a list with random numbers? Did you copy, get a copy of the original list so you have two? Did you remove all duplicates from the copy or just not include them to begin with? Did you print both the original and the copy? And then I would like for you to avoid duplication in your code. Uh, sometimes you just do stuff because it gets done, but you don't really think about how I can reuse my code. And the purpose of functions, you know, one of the main purposes of functions is that you can reuse the code without having to do a separate function for every little thing you're doing. And then make sure, of course, your program works correctly, has no bugs in it, and with appropriate use of functions. I'm going to show you some examples of what your program might look like at the end. Here's a look at an example using option one. So, so I have, I'm not showing you the code for fill list because you already know how to do that. But if you are using option one, know that you have to have two lists that you're going to be filling at the same time, just like you did for dice rolls, just like you did for mean, median, and mode. So I have my list that I'm filling with random numbers and my counters that I'm incrementing. Also, I'm not showing you the code for print list. You already know how to do that. You're going to, but you should be able to use one function for printing the original and one for, and the same function for printing the copy. You don't have to do two separate functions. I've left my parameter names as pretty general because I could, I should be able to use it for any list. If I put down the specific name, I can still use it for any list, but I'm not as likely to do so. So I just used some pretty generic uh, parameter names. Also for my results, I'm going to be just uh, using for parameters my two lists. I could use A list and B list here. And then my main, I'm going to have my original, I'm going to have my counters, filling the list, copying the list, results. For re uh, removing my duplicates, I'm not actually removing them, but what I'm going to do when I make my copy list is only put in a single value of anything that's already included in a list. So I'm going to use, I can use a regular for loop starting at one and going through the length of my counters. And if that, um, if the val value in counters is greater than zero, I append I to my copy list. I've got an example run over here. If we run it again. Let's put in like 20 numbers. And you can see all 20 right there. When I take out all the duplicates, it's just been reduced to this. Here's my two averages, and I actually removed nine numbers, or didn't actually choose to put them into the copy list. So this is the output that you should be generating with this program. Here's an example of the remove duplicates program, program using option two. So I'm not showing you the code for fill list or print list. You should already know how to do those. And I'm not showing you for the results because that's going to be on your own as well. But for removing duplicates, like we talked about, you're going to have a variable for your index and then a, like basically a counter for each one that you're going to remove. And you're going to use a while loop comparing your index to the length of the list. And make sure you have to go one less because um, you're going to be always comparing with the one above. And then inside this loop, if uh, you're going to compare the value at index with the value at index plus one. If they're the same, you pop it, and otherwise you increment index. At the end, you should have uh, counted how many removes you've got, so you kind of can take care of more than one thing at a time there. 
you'll want to take a close look. If you want to use option two, take a close look at the program you just finished, the multiples list program. And we, so we did something similar here, and you'll be able to modify it. So for this option B, let's just run it a couple times and see what kind of output we get. We're going to ask for 20 numbers. You can see, compare the two lists, my two averages, and I have removed seven elements. And if I run it again, let's put in just 10, and I only removed one element, and I've got my averages.